Imagine this. You're a mythical ancient Greek woman called Pandora, and you've just received a very intriguing gift from Zeus. Now, you've been advised, opening gifts from Zeus is generally a bad idea, but you also really want to know what's in the box. So what do you do? Do you open the box? Maybe just for a second, just a tiny peek to see what's inside. What's the worst that can happen? We would love to not be making a video about pandemics. We're very aware that COVID emerged not very long ago. It was really horrible and millions of people died. And now we'd all rather never have to talk or think about it ever again. Unfortunately, this series is about the world's most pressing problems. So we don't get to pick them based on whether they're enjoyable to talk about. If we were making a series about the world's most fun problems, we'd be talking about ice cream or something. But we're not. Instead, this video is about the threat of catastrophic pandemics. COVID-19 was a global disaster. Millions of people died, and we still haven't come to grips with the fallout. But future pandemics could be even worse than COVID, potentially killing hundreds of millions, collapsing civilization, or in the worst imaginable case, killing pretty much everyone. Sounds pretty bad. How likely is that exactly? Well, first some good news. It hasn't happened so far. Historically, pandemics like the Black Death or the Spanish flu have been amongst the worst things to ever happen ever, decimating continents and killing untold millions. But even the very worst historical pandemics never reached a truly global scale of destructiveness. After all, if a past pandemic had wiped out humanity or permanently collapsed civilization, you probably wouldn't be watching this video. But maybe the risk is higher now, with globalization, urbanization, and intensive animal farming. Yes, very plausibly. On the other hand, we're also a lot better at medicine, and most crucially, sanitation, than we were in the 14th century. In the 21st century alone, we've seen child mortality continue to fall, the near eradication of guinea worm disease, the global spread of antiretroviral treatment for HIV, and the fastest ever production of vaccines during COVID. So natural pandemics have been and could continue to be unimaginably terrible. But they're also something we've endured for millennia, and we're now much more capable at protecting ourselves against the very worst outcomes thanks to the heroic work of scientists and pandemic prevention experts. Sounds like this really scary idea of wildly catastrophic pandemics that could kill hundreds of millions of people is unlikely to ever happen. Phew. Glad we've addressed that. Let's spend the rest of the video talking about ice cream. Ice cream was first invented thousands of years ago by combining mountain snow with various fruits, which frankly sounds disgusting, but was probably mind-blowing at the time. As technology advanced, we invented fridges. Ice cream was refined and perfected to create the cool sweet snack we know and love today. We even found a way to make it with soy and coconut milk, so it doesn't always have to involve inhumane methane-heavy dairy farming. Thank goodness for human ingenuity. Take that, nature. No more mountain snow for us. Now, what else can we improve? What else does nature do that we could maybe have a go at ourselves? Maybe play around a bit, try out some new things. Advances in biotechnology over the last century mean that we're now increasingly able to make precise genetic modifications to dangerous pathogens in the lab. And it seems these advances may someday, and maybe someday soon, make it possible to engineer a novel pathogen strain more dangerous than anything found in nature. When pathogens evolve in the wild, they're not optimized to be as deadly as possible. From an evolutionary point of view, they're only trying to replicate. They're not usually trying to kill. This means it seems possible that someone could <clears throat> improve on nature's blueprint to make something even more catastrophic. Okay, that seems troubling. But surely, even given advanced technology, it still takes a lot of expertise and resources and a top-of-the-range biolab to do this. This is absolutely true. And the scientists who work with dangerous pathogens only do it in high security labs, which operate under lots of rules and regulations to ensure safety. Okay, great. Nothing to worry about then. Sounds like everything's been taken care of. We still got time left. Back to ice cream. One of the great things about ice cream is how soft and cold it is. Like, wow, talk about a crazy combo. 
it's soft, and it's cold. Now, let's eat a big spoon of ice cream and just casually double check if anything's ever gone wrong at a high security bio lab. In 1967, 32 people connected to laboratories handling African green monkeys in Marburg, Frankfurt, and Belgrade developed a mysterious severe illness. Seven of them died. The monkeys were carrying what is now known as the Marburg virus, an extremely deadly relative of Ebola. Whoops. Hopefully just a one-off? In 1978, a smallpox lab leak at a UK facility resulted in the quarantine of over 200 people and the death of a medical photographer, a year after the disease had been eradicated in the wild. Okay, so it sounds like people were a bit lax about this stuff in the 60s and 70s. Surely nothing like this has happened recently? Between 2000 and 2021, 309 people were infected due to lab accidents and biocontainment breaches involving 51 pathogens globally, according to a recent Chatham House report. And there's been a lot of discussion about the possibility that COVID started as a lab leak, though there's no consensus yet. But here's something we do know. Lab leaks are not consistently tracked globally, so the chilling reality is that we just have no way of knowing the full extent of the threat they pose. Not very reassuring, but it gets worse. Someone could do this on purpose. This scenario is really the stuff of nightmares, and it's not a purely speculative risk. There are plenty of examples of bioweapon use in history, from British troops giving smallpox contaminated blankets to Native American tribes in 1763, to the post-9-11 anthrax letter attacks. One example that isn't very well known. In World War II, as part of their experimental bioweapons program, the Japanese military dropped plague-infected fleas on Chinese villages and experimented on live victims, killing many thousands of people. As technology progresses, the tools for creating a biological disaster could become increasingly accessible and the barriers to achieving terrifying results may get lower and lower. Simultaneously, the advancement of AI may exacerbate the risk. If someone or some group has enough motivation, resources, and sufficient technical skill, it's difficult to place an upper limit on how catastrophic an engineered pandemic they might one day create. First, the bad news. Adding together the risks of natural pandemics, unintentional leaks, and deliberate misuse, it does seem to us that on the whole as a species, we should be pretty worried about the chances of a catastrophic pandemic happening in the next few decades. For this reason, we think this threat is up there with the most pressing problems faced by humanity today. Now the good news. There are actually a ton of achievable and ambitious things that can be done to reduce the risks. What's more, many of these approaches could broadly protect against all pandemic risks while others target specific threats. We can invest in pathogen surveillance and build early warning systems that help us detect and respond to new pathogens before they become full-fledged pandemics. We don't know what pathogen will come for us next, but we can develop better and more adaptable vaccines and treatments. And we can also invest in non-pharmaceutical interventions such as personal protective equipment and technologies that improve indoor air quality that will protect us against a wide range of possible future threats. The history of lab accidents and biowarfare is terrifying, but from the level of international treaties down to individual labs, we can improve the policies and practices that prevent scientific research from leading accidentally or deliberately to more death and hardship. This isn't the kind of problem that could be solved by one breakthrough or one individual. We need thousands and thousands of people all over the world, not just pandemic prevention professionals and scientists, but also security experts and policymakers, engineers and designers. Maybe even you. There are a lot of brilliant people already doing incredible work in this field, but there aren't enough of them. And right now, we are not prepared. It's still true that we've made important progress against the threat of disease thanks to incredible breakthroughs in medicine and public health. But we weren't really prepared for COVID, and even now, we haven't done nearly enough to reduce the risk of the next pandemic, whether it's a natural pandemic or one of the new and potentially even worse threats that could be on the horizon. As a civilization, we owe it to every single human being on Earth to do better than this. We don't have the luxury of ignoring pandemics for a bit because we just had one and it was really hard and we'd like a bit of a breather, thanks. We can't afford to just cross our fingers and keep rolling the dice forever. 
the future of civilization shouldn't be left to blind hope. Imagine this, you're a mythical ancient Greek woman called Pandora, and you're staring in horror at the box you've just opened, releasing into the world endless strife, sickness, and suffering. What do you do? Do you have one last look into the bottom of the box? Maybe there's something else in there, right at the bottom. You reach your hand down, deep into the box, and you think about how, although our knowledge and curiosity might be part of the reason the risks are so great right now, they've also given us vaccines and medicine and science and the ability to fight pandemics at all. Your fingers touch something, something soft. Soft, but also cold. Shit, it's anthrax. To read about the risks from catastrophic pandemics in more detail, how it compares to other pressing problems, and how you could contribute by finding a career in this area, check out our website, 80,000hours.org.